Hey guys, Rat Mayo here, and today I want to talk to you about the small block Chevy 327. A little bit of an interesting small block that not too many people actually use much anymore, unless they're generally restoring like a numbers matching hot rod or something along those lines. But I wanted to get into this engine because it's actually a pretty unique engine and it's pretty cool, honestly. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So getting right into it, the 327 was introduced in 1962 and carried out all the way through 1969. And it was in a myriad of Chevrolet vehicles, such as the Corvette, Impala, El Camino, Chevelle, Nova, Chevy trucks, etc. It was in a lot of cars. And basically throughout those time periods, they made a whole bunch of different horsepower numbers depending on what car you had, what option you had for that engine package in that car. For example, they made as low as 210 horsepower all the way up to 375 horsepower in a C2 Corvette when, cho when chosen with the right engine option. But that's not the point of this video. I'm not going to break down necessarily every engine option that they ever came with. I'm going to get into basically what you're going to want to look for if you are wanting to build a 327 and what to kind of avoid because at the end of the day, a 327 is still is an amazing engine option. It's not going to really give you any downfalls from a 350 other than the slight displacement issue. It's going to have a bit more or a bit less displacement, as I should say. But there are some key features to finding a 327 that might be beneficial to somebody wanting to build a small block on a budget. Now, generally speaking, the small block 327 is still a very viable engine if you do want to build something for your hot rod. Now, this is assuming you can get one on a decent budget. There are some highlights to this engine that I would like to basically just throw out there to help you make up your decision if you're looking for an engine. One of them being is that if you get a 1962 to a 1967 model 327, you're going to have what is referred to as a small journal crankshaft. 68 and 69 have a large journal crankshaft. And a common misconception here is that you can throw a 350 crank and rotating assembly essentially into a 327 and just make it a 350. While this is true, it's only true to a point. You can only do this really bolt-in wise, you can only really do that on a 68 and 69 block because the large journal crankshafts in those 327s were the same journal size as found in the 350s. So 68 and 69 are basically going to have the exact same block as a 350. So what I want to do is jump into the differences between the small and the large journal 327. 62 to 67 being small journal, 68 and 69 being a large journal. While they technically share the same bore between the two and the same stroke realistically, the difference is the journals in the crank are actually bigger, as I stated previously. So in the later ones, the 68 and 69, large journals you can put in a 350 rotating assembly and essentially make it a 350 cubic inch engine but when it comes to like essentially what you're wanting to look for in a 327 if you're specifically wanting to build a 327 the small journal is going to be a better fit and here's why so I went ahead here and I made kind of a diagram to show the differences between the large and the small journal crankshaft so we have this outside diameter here of this cardboard essentially as the large journal and this inner black ring that I drew in Sharpie as the small journal. The differences aren't this massive by any means. The large journal has 2.45 inch mains with 2.1 inch rods on the journals and then the small journal has 2.3 inch mains and 2 inch rods. So it's not an insane difference, however, this does create quite a bit of an impact when we get into what we're gonna get into. So, this dot in the center here references the center of the crank. So, on a large journal, if they're both spinning the same exact RPM, the outside diameter of the crankshaft is actually going to be spinning faster to reach the same point than the small journal crankshaft. While both spinning the same RPM, obviously, you know, the speed at the center of the crank is gonna be the same, but the further out you go and the bigger you go, with the journal size, the faster that the outside of the journal is going to spin against your bearings. And this can cause premature bearing wear and basically just kind of limit how high you can, or how high you can rev out the engine, how high you can essentially, well, yeah, 
how long and how high you can essentially rev out the engine. So that is one major factor to look at is that the small journal is gonna have to cover less ground to get to the same point when it's rotating as the large journal. And that's a huge thing when revving out or when revving out your engine because small journal cranks or small journal crank 327s they frequently see them revving seven eight even nine thousand rpms with the small journal cranks and they are still just reliable with their stock crankshafts now other than this example here that i put out there are a few other differences so the other difference is realistically, well, the one other big difference that's realistically gonna be included in the small journal versus large journal debate is going to be that the 62 to 67 blocks generally were more in high performance cars. Um, not saying that they couldn't be put in you know, a base model something, but generally that's when the peak of performance was for the 327. So a lot of those 62 to 67 blocks are gonna have forged cranks. This is a huge benefit if you're wanting an engine that can rev out. When later on, the 327 actually became more of a base model engine in 68 and 69 while they were phasing out to the 350, those are generally going to be seen with cast cranks. Again, it's all dependent through all the years there, 62 to 69 on what engine package and what car that engine originally came out of. Um, whether it's going to be forged or cast, but just so you know, 68 and 69 more likely to gonna gonna have a cast crank, and 62 to 67 is more likely going to have a forged crank. So something that I want to throw in here is, while this is a big block Chevy, I want to show you that you can actually identify small, well, small block and technically big block Chevys um, by checking the casting number at the back of the engine. So this will help tell you whether or not it's a 327 to begin with or if it's a small or large journal 327. And that casting number will be on the driver's side if it's in a vehicle and at the back of the engine. And it'll be right here. This number right here will essentially tell you what engine or what engine it is as well as if it's a small or a large journal. And basically, yeah, just take a look there and I'll go ahead and throw the casting numbers to all the different 327s, both small and large journal throughout the years. Go ahead and throw that up now, that way you can take a look. And one awesome thing about the 327 is actually going to be the cylinder heads. A lot of them actually came with a pretty decent head right out of the box, and that's going to be the camel hump head. Now this is actually the second best GM production head that they ever put on a small block Chevy other than the later Vortec heads which is 1996 to 2002. So if you do have a set of camel hump heads and I'll go ahead and show what those look like here. Essentially there's a marking on the end of the head that you can look at that'll easily tell you if it's a performance variant or not. Granted some of these engines could have actually been changed over the years. That is something to look for, especially considering that they're 50, 60 year old engines at this point. And you're in actually pretty good luck if you do see this set of heads on there as people have actually pushed these heads up over four, or even 500 horsepower with porting or even over 400 horsepower without really doing much to the heads at all. So these are a decent set of heads. If you want to upgrade later, you can even go to the junkyard and as I said, get a set of Vortec heads. But these ones would be completely fine to throw a cam in, decent intake carburetor headers, stuff like that. You can be making good power in no time. Another thing to note about the 327 is that they were actually never produced with four bolt mains. So you can only get a 327 block with two bolt mains from the factory. This is a bit different than the 350 as some performance variants may come with a four bolt main with a 350 and some non-performance variants may come with a two bolt main. The four bolt mains generally would be stronger. No questions asked about that. Unfortunately, the 327 just never came with four bolt mains. However, the good thing about them being two bolt mains is what you can do is something called a splayed main cap conversion. It essentially, can, uh, you can take it to your local machine shop. You can have the block machine to accept a four bolt main cap but since they only came in two bolt blocks, you can get a splayed main cap, which basically angles the outer bolts at a different, a bit, essentially a different angle. And it's actually stronger than a standard four bolt main setup. So it's a bit of a caveat, but if you do want to work for it, technically they can be made stronger than even a standard four bolt main 350 block. 
And getting down to it, the biggest differences between the 327 and say, you know, your average 350 is going to be the stroke. Now, the 327 and the 350 share the same bore of four inches, but the stroke is different. On the 327, it actually has a three and a quarter stroke, while the 350 has a 3.48 inch stroke. And the 327 having a 3.25 inch stroke actually can come in its favor in some instances. For example, like we were talking about earlier, how the smaller journal 327s were a bit better for higher RPM usage because of the size of the crank journals. Because the 327, just in general, large or small journal, has a shorter stroke, every time the engine basically spins around every RPM, the piston is having to travel less distance with that shorter stroke. And that keeps piston speed down. And what that essentially does is it just prevents further wear on your internals. So the longer stroke, say in the 350, is going to wear just a bit faster than a shorter stroke that has to travel basically less during the same amount of time. And at the end of the day, if you took a 350 and a 327 and put them next to each other with the same exact parts, same intake, headers, carb, cam, you name it, if everything was the same except the displacement being 327 and 350, the 350 still is going to make more power at the end of the day cubic inches is realistically king. However, the caveat to that is though, the 327 still will take more higher RPM abuse, given the differences in stroke and the differences when you have a small journal 327, it's going to live a lot longer at those higher RPMs than say a 350. So that is one caveat. You will make more power with the same modifications given more cubic inches but the 327 more than likely is going to live a little bit longer at those higher RPMs. Unfortunately, you're more than likely not gonna be able to find one of these engines at a local wrecking yard. It's just not something that's realistically going to be in there nowadays. Um, as I said, these engines were made from 1962 to 1969, and most of the stuff in the wrecking yard is gonna be newer. So that leads us to more than likely buying off of either Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace. This is where you got to do a little bit of dance there is because some people will list their 327s thinking it's something super rare and it may as it might be but they might list it for say $3000 and you get a block and a crank and then there's going to be the couple hundred dollar 327s that are just the full core engine and you know ready to rebuild the whole engines there so that's what you're going to have to keep your eye out on is there are some people that want thousands of dollars for these engines but a lot of the time you can find them realistically for a couple hundred bucks. They are out there. Overall, the 327 is an awesome engine, so if you can find it at a decent price, don't shy away from it. Realistically, it's one of the engines that basically pioneered the Chevrolet muscle car era. These engines were at drag strips all the time during that time, and even today, still a very viable choice for a decent classic or a street rod, pretty much. So, I think we'll go ahead and end this video off by watching the 327 go down the drag strip. Anyways, I do appreciate you guys for watching, and if you want to see more of this type of content and more engine reviews, just please comment, like, and subscribe. And as always, you guys have a great day.